Just since time immemorial, since man first set foot on earth. The view of life acceptable to God Almighty is this land. Allah says in the Quran, We are going to protect you, but then this is only one deserves to be glorified is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam will trump over all fighters. The most honorable in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. And that is what Allah says in the Quran. All oh, you believe and then do Islam wholeheartedly. He's giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and to earn a prophet's reward. Today is the most important weapon in the world. It can convert black into white, to white, day into night, to night, hero into villain, to villain into hero. The media, it is very powerful. The media picks up black sheep of the Muslim community and it portrays these people as though they're exemplary Muslim. We should not only remove the misconceptions that the international media is spreading against Islam, but we should also try and present the current teachings of Islam. And we Muslims, we should do dawah through the media. The media. strategy used by the media is that they pick up certain Islamic words and they mistranslate it. And today, the most misunderstood word, it is the word Jihad. Jihad is not only misunderstood by many of the non-Muslims, it is even misunderstood by many of the Muslims. Many non-Muslims and Muslims think that Jihad is any war fought by any Muslim for any reason, whether it be for land, whether it be for fame, whether it be for wealth, whether it be for money. Jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim, whether it be for land, whether it be for fame, whether it be for wealth, whether it be for money. Jihad is derived from the Arabic word jihada, which means to strive, which means to struggle. Jihad means to strive and struggle against one's own evil inclination. Jihad also means to strive and struggle to make the society better. Jihad also means to strive and struggle in the battlefield. So jihad basically means to strive to struggle. For example, if there's a student who's striving and struggling to pass in the examination, in Arabic, we would say that he's doing jihad. For example, I'm delivering the message of Islam. I'm not harming anyone. I'm not killing anyone. So even I'm doing jihad. I'm striving and struggling. And many non-Muslims, many people, they have a misconception that jihad can only be done by Muslims. This misconception can easily be removed just by quoting two verses of the glorious Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتُهُ هُمُّهُ وَحْنًا عَلَىٰ وَحْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي آمَيْنِ That they have enjoined upon man kindness to his parents. His mother bore him with weakness upon weakness and his weaning is in two years. And the next verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 15. وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِيَ عِلْمِ فَلَا تُتِعْهُمَا And if the parents, they do jihad, strive and struggle to make you worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do not obey them, but yet live with them with love and compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats a similar message in Surah An-Kabu, chapter number 29, verse number 8. And if the parents, they do jihad, strive and struggle to make you worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do not obey them. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about non-Muslim parents who are doing jihad, striving and struggling to make their children worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this type of jihad is jihad fi sabil shaitan Jihad in the path of the Satan. What we Muslims should do is jihad fi sabid Allah, jihad in the way of Allah. But normally when the term jihad is used, it is taken for granted that it is jihad fi sabid Allah, jihad in the way of Allah. And many people, they translate jihad as holy war. This word holy war in Arabic, it is harbun muqaddasa. Nowhere is this word harbun muqaddasa present in the glorious Quran or in the authentic hadith. 
This word holy war, it was first used to describe the Christian crusaders who spread Christianity at the point of the sword and forced tens of thousands of people to accept Christianity. Today, it is used in a negative connotation for the Muslims. Why? So this is the strategy of the media. That they pick up certain Islamic words and they mistranslate it. The fourth strategy used by the media is that they say certain things which are completely alien to Islam, which do not exist in Islam. For example, they say that Islam subjugates the woman. Islam is an illogical religion. Islam is an unscientific religion. Who says Islam subjugates the woman? The religion which has given the maximum rights to a woman it is Islam. The person who has given the maximum rights to a woman, who has uplifted the woman, he is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Who says Islam is an illogical religion? Islam is the most logical religion. Islam is the most scientific religion. This is a strategy. They say certain things which are completely alien to Islam, which do not exist in Islam. The fifth strategy used by the media is, they say certain things which are correct, but the interpretation is wrong. The media says that Muslims are fundamentalist. And because Muslims are fundamentalist, humanity is in a problem. They say that Muslims are extremists. And because Muslims are extremists, humanity is in a problem. They say Islam is an intolerant religion. And because Islam is an intolerant religion, humanity is in a problem. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? Fundamentalist by definition means a person who follows the fundamentals of a particular subject. For example, for a person to be a good mathematician, he should know, follow, and strive to practice the fundamentals of maths. Unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of maths, he cannot be a good mathematician. For a person to be a good scientist, he should know, follow, and strive to practice the fundamentals of science. Unless he's a fundamentalist in the field of science, he cannot be a good scientist. You cannot paint all fundamentalists with the same brush that all are good or all are bad. Depending upon which field the person is a fundamentalist, you have to label him accordingly. For example, there's a fundamentalist doctor whose profession is to save human lives. He's a bone for the society. On the other hand, there is a fundamentalist robber whose profession is to rob. He's a bane for the society. As far as I am concerned, I am a fundamentalist Muslim and I am proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim. Because I know and I strive to practice the fundamentals of Islam. And I know that there is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. I challenge any human being to point out a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. There may be some fundamentals which some people might think they are against humanity. But the moment you give the logical background, there is not a single fundamental of Islam which is against humanity as a whole. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalism? According to the Webster Dictionary, fundamentalism was first used to describe a group of American Protestant Christians who protested against the church. The Christian church believed that the Bible was the word of God. These American Protestant Christians they not only believe that the Bible was the word of God, but they believe that every word, every letter of the Bible is the word of God. If anyone can prove that every word, every letter of the Bible is the word of God, then this movement is a good movement. Whereas on the other hand, if anyone can prove that every word, every letter of the Bible is not the word of God, then this movement is not a good movement. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? According to the Oxford Dictionary, Fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient doctrine of any religion. And in the revised edition of the Oxford Dictionary, fundamentalist is a person who strictly adheres to the ancient doctrine of any religion, especially Islam. This word, especially Islam, has been added in the revised edition of the Oxford Dictionary. The moment you hear the word fundamentalist, you start thinking of a Muslim, you start thinking of an extremist. And many of the Muslims, they are apologetic. No, 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 I'm not an extremist. I tell the people, I am an extremist. I'm extremely kind. I'm extremely loving. I'm extremely merciful. I'm extremely just. What's wrong in being an extremist? Why are we apologetic? 
What's wrong in being extremely kind, extremely honest, extremely loving, extremely merciful? But we should only be an extremist in the right direction. We should not be an extremist in the wrong direction. Today, the media says that Muslims are terrorists. What is the meaning of the word terrorist? Terrorist, by definition, means a person who causes terror. And many a times, two different labels are given to the same person for the same activity. About 60 to 70 years back, before India gained its freedom, there were people who were fighting for the freedom of the country. And these people, by the British government, they were called as terrorists. Whereas, by us common Indians, they were called as freedom fighters, as patriots. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. If we agree with the view of the British government that the Britishers had come to rule over India, then you would call these people as terrorists. Whereas, if you agree with the view of the common Indians that the Britishers had come to do trade, they had no right to rule over us, then you would call these people as freedom fighters, as patriots. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. And we have several such examples. The Britishers, they call Bhagat Singh as terrorists. Whereas we common Indians, we call him a freedom fighter, a patriot. Same person, same activity, but two different labels. And we have several such examples. We have the example of the American Revolution that took place in 1775. George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, by the Britishers, they were called as terrorists number one. Later on, when America gets its freedom, George Washington, he's made the president of USA. Imagine terrorist number one becomes the president of USA. And we have several such examples. We have the example of South Africa when it was ruled by the white apartheid government. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned in Robben Island for more than 25 years. And later on, when South Africa gets its freedom, Nelson Mandela is made the president of South Africa. Imagine terrorist number one becomes the president of South Africa. And he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. Imagine terrorist number one gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. Not that he was bad, then he became good. For the same activity for which he was called as a terrorist, he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. So here we realize the media it is very powerful. Whatever label the media gives a person, that label gets stuck to him. Whether right or wrong is secondary, whatever label the media gives a person, that label gets stuck to him. The true and faithful servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some faces in the day of resurrection will beam in brightness. Their qualities, their characteristics. Those who believe. Allah Sheikh Sayyid Al Ghadi. And their hearts find tranquility and rest by remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Can we be one of them? Indeed, by remembering Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, hearts find rest and tranquility. Welcome to a brand new series, The Servants of Allah. Hisham Bella. Which, inshallah Ta'ala, will focus on those issues which Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala loves. loves. Let's learn. How and what gains us the favor and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Servants of Allah every Thursday at 4.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al -Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. Let me 
created the universe to appreciate the word to word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in scientific notions in the glorious Quran next on peace tv And the whole world believes in any misconception spread by the media without verifying it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 6. In jayakum fasqum miraba in fatabayyanu. Whenever a message comes to thee, check it up before you pass it on to the third person. The sixth strategy used by the media is the double standards. When a 50-year-old Arab Muslim marries a 12-year-old girl, it comes as headlines in the newspapers. But when a 50-year-old non-Muslim rapes a 6-year-old girl, it comes as news brief. Why these double standards? When a 50-year-old Arab Muslim marries a 12-year-old girl, it comes as headlines. But when a 50-year-old non-Muslim rapes a 6-year-old girl, it comes as news brief. Why these double standards? So here we realize, whomsoever the media wants to highlight, it can highlight. Whatever it wants to put in news brief, whatever it wants to hide, it can hide. The seventh strategy used by the media is that the media, it picks up certain Muslims who do not practice Islam, who do not follow the Quran, who do not follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who criticize Islam. The media picks up such people and makes them famous. And we have the example of Salman Rushdie. He wrote a book, The Satanic Verses. What did the media do? This book, it criticizes Islam, it criticizes Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, criticizes the Quran. What did the media do? It picked up Salman Rushdie and made him famous, gave him award. And we have the example of Taslima Nasreen. She wrote a book, Lajja, criticizing Islam, criticizing Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, criticizing the Quran. What did the media do? The media picked her up, made her famous, gave her awards. So this is the strategy of the media. And we Muslims made Salman Rushdie famous. The strategies how to deal with such issues. The eighth strategy used by the media is that whenever a Muslim does anything good, they hide the identity. We have the example of the nuclear weaponry, Abul Kalam. They will not say Muslim Indian, they will only say Indian. And we have the example of Aristotle of the East. Avicenna. It is not Avicenna, it is Ali ibn Sina. And we have the example of the father of chemistry. In our school he studied, he is Geber. It's not Geber, it is Jabir bin Hayyan, the one who distilled alcohol. And the word alcohol is derived from the Arabic word al-ghul, which means evil spirits. So this is the strategy of the Western media. Whenever a Muslim does anything good, they will hide his identity. They will either call him an Indian or a scientist, or they will either give him a Western name. But when a Muslim does anything bad, does anything wrong, the media will pick up these black sheep and will make them famous. And the media will say that Muslim so-and-so has done it. And we have the example of the Newsweek magazine. It states that 60,000 books were written against Islam in the span of 150 years, from 1800 to 1950. That means every day, one book is written against Islam. And after 9-11, this has reached epidemic levels. Every day, several books have been written against Islam. And we Muslims, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. Wallah, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. The Christian missionaries, they use all their tactics, good and bad, put together to spread the message of Christianity. I would like to give you an example. Can you read what is written on this? Can you read what is written on this? Everybody, if you ask them, they will read this as Allah Muhammad. And even if you ask the Arabs, the calligraphy is so similar that they will read it as Allah Muhammad. But if you look closely over here, there is a ba. It is not Allah Muhammad. It is rather Allah Muhabba. God is love. This is a verse from the Bible, from the first epistle of John, chapter number 4, verse number 16, which says that God is love, and whosoever dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God, and God dwelleth in him. So these Christian missionaries, they are using deceit. 
It's like a snake in the house. They are using all their tactics to spread the message of Christianity. And we Muslims, whenever we find anything written in Arabic, what do we do? We pick it up, kiss it, put it into our pocket. Anything near the door fallen down on the ground written in Arabic, we pick it up, kiss it, put it into our pocket. These Christian missionaries, they are using deceit to fool us Muslims. And coming back to the media, the country which has the maximum number of English-speaking people, it is USA. 350 million people in USA, they speak English. Number two, which country is it? Is it UK? It's not UK. It's a country, India. 125 to 200 million people in India, they speak English. It is the second language in our country. And number three is UK. 60 million people in UK, they speak English. You know why I'm telling you this? Because there are two magazines in USA. There are two organizations by the name of ISNA and ICNA. Islamic Society of North America and Islamic Circle of North America. And these two organizations, the ISNA, it produces a magazine by the name of The Horizons. And ICNA, it produces another magazine by the name of The Message. So both these magazines put together, how many copies do they print? Few years back, it was 50,000 per month. Now it may have increased, it may have become 60, 70, 80,000. That's it. And we have the example of the Islamic Voice magazine, the Indian magazine, which is monthly published. How many copies do they print? Maximum 10 to 15,000 per month. When the Christian missionaries they print, they print in large numbers. And recently when I was in Nigeria, when I was coming back from the airport hotel, I saw so many posters. So and so Christian country, not even a single Islamic poster. These Christian missionaries, when they do dawah, when they spread Christianity, they do it in a big amount. And I would like to give you an example. Here I have a copy of a magazine by the name of Watchtower. How many copies do they print? Can you guess how many copies do they print? Can you guess? How much? One lakh, brother saying one lakh. Can you guess? You know how many copies they print? Fortnightly they print 37.1 million copies. That means monthly they print 74.2 million copies. Watched our magazine. And in how many languages? 5, 10, 20, 30. In no less than 169 languages. And the same organization, the Jehovah's Witnesses, it prints another magazine by the name Awake. And how many copies do they print? They print no less than 35.7 million copies per month. And in no less than 81 languages. So both these magazines put together, the Awake and the Watchtower, 35.7 million plus 74.2 million, it equals to 110 million copies. And this was four and a half years back. What is the present in 2013? You know, the Watchtower magazine, they print 45 million copies fortnightly. That means 90 million copies per month. And the Awake magazine, they print 43.7 million copies per month. So the Awake and the Watchtower magazine put together 43.7 million plus 90 million, it equals to 133 million copies. And this Watchtower magazine, it is printed in no less than 210 languages. And the Awake magazine, it is printed in no less than 99 languages. So these Christian missionaries, they are printing in large numbers. We Muslims, leave aside print. We can't even think of printing in such large quantities. And unfortunately, we Muslims, we are very poor. We are miskeen when it comes to the media. What we print, one color job, two color job, Islamic voice. And what we Muslims, we print 80,000, 100,000 peanuts. Unfortunately, we Muslims, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. Wallah, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. And Alhamdulillah, the Islamic Research Foundation it has taken the initiative to print books. The Quran and Modern Science, the concept of God in major world religions, the misconceptions about Islam. All these books, they are printed. Maybe it may have reached a million copies. But yet it is peanuts as compared to the Christian missionaries. 
And we have the example of Jimmy Swaggart. You might have heard the person Jimmy Swaggart. He was the greatest tele-evangelist of his time. How much was his budget? His annual budget was $400 million. He required a million dollars a day to keep his head above water. I doubt how many Muslim organizations, how many Islamic organizations have a million dollar monthly budget. I doubt, I don't know of any. And we have the example of Sheikh Ahmad Didar. He was only educated till sixth grade. Yet, he took the entire Christian dumb single-handedly. Our one Sheikh Ahmad Didat was sufficient for the entire Christianity. Unfortunately, the budget that he had, it was very small. And they had special organizations. They had full wings doing research on Sheikh Ahmad Didat. How to defeat him, how to attack him. Season comes and jello.